Hello there everyone, my name is Mike D'Angelo, I am the lead creator of Telst. I am back here today to take a look at uh, what it looks like to do some of the maps that I create in Incarnate for the Telus Patreon. Um, today we're actually going to be doing a sequel map to actually my second map ever. Um, I did, what I'll do is I'll show you a real quick preview. Um, this map I put together um, just trying to really understand how to kind of do underwater stuff in the system to you know move things into the background and then kind of draw over them with the uh, the tool set that Incarnate gives you. Um, and what we're actually going to do next is take what we see here and um, make an additional battle map for it to connect on the you know off the south side of this map. Um, so my typical battle map template is a 40 by 20 grid. Um, after this, what we'll have is a pretty straightforward square grid of 40 by 40 if you combine both maps together. Um, so I kind of already knew, you know, leading into this, what the plan was going to be for the, the sequel map. I knew that there was going to be, you know, these islands going into it. I knew that there was going to be some water features that were going to move into it. Um, I don't know 100% everything. I just know um, when I'm putting together my maps, typically I am doing four points of view. Um, there are a couple of things here on the base map that you have for the Jungle Temple. Obviously you have um, the Sunken Temple itself. You have the entrance over here that you would have to get to. Um, there's some bridges that you would have to cross. You don't see much by way of enemies or anything like that on the the main map, but we do have variants um, that people will see on the Patreon at the higher level. Um, for five dollars a month, you get to see all the variants for the new ones that um, the new maps that my brother and I work on that are coming out, and subsequently you also get all the variants that have come in the past. We are up to our 21st map now. Um, and I think something around the lines of like 65, 70 variants. Um, when we put together our maps, we try to kind of move quickly with things. We, um, we want to put stuff together, you know, um, that, you know, people can use all at once. And um, so for the, the jungle map being my second one, there wasn't too much. I'll actually, we'll take a real quick peek at those. Um, just a night one and then something with props. Um, if I was going to be doing this as DM, I'd probably use this one because you've got kind of like a watchtower. You've got some um, some boats that you could use to get to the various islands, um, something like that. And I specifically colored everything kind of green um, because I wanted the, I'm envisioning this area to be kind of like, um, like a lizard folk uh, camp. In the Telus universe, they're called Lugano. Um, and I wanted to kind of give something that kind of you know, spoke to that a little bit. Um, and in the new map, we'll probably keep to that green coloring. Uh, what we're actually going to do is, if we take a step back out of this, <clears throat> we're gonna clone this. So we'll head back down to the Jungle Temple. And I know that the, the main point of the new map is going to be a focus on a fighting ring. The idea is, that the Logano will have captured um, someone. Doesn't have to be the players. It could be, you know, civilians from a nearby town. It could be animals that they're going to put into the fighting ring. Just something. But the main focus is going to be the fighting ring. So that's what I'm going to name the map. So we're going to call it the Jungle Fighting Ring. Hello, Pickledorf. Um, for those who are going to see this later. Pickledorf is not just some rando, that's my brother. Um, and we're just trying to feel things out, see how things uh, look. Um, it'll kind of be my quality control to make sure that I'm not making a silly fool out of myself or anything like that. Um, my map is going to end up here um, at the top of the stuff that I've posted to Patreon. What I'm actually going to do is just move it to my maps. So it'll just go back to the regular maps here. And what I'll be able to do is go into edit map. And the reason that I did it this way is because I want to make sure that all the colors, all the, uh, 
the stamps that I have used that I can use them again. I want to make sure that things stay consistent from one map to the next, um, at least for the base map. Certain things, you know, I'm not going to try too feverishly to make sure that, um, like, the night filter is a one to one um, with you know this map. So when I'm you know working on that next one, we are going to kind of tweak things a little bit. So the next step is making sure that I, I have an idea of where I'm going. I don't want to just um, you know f you know you can you can you can wing it. Certainly in some of my newer maps where there's nothing to base anything off of, I do just kind of you know like let, let the wind take me. Um, but in this case, because it is a sequel map, I, I need to be a little bit more precise with the things that I'm doing. So what I'm going to show you real quick is the let's see. I have a follow-up that I've been working on. So this here is kind of supposed to give you like a, an idea of the shape of the new map that I'm going to be working on. Um, and, and it gives you the points of interest that I'm, I'm planning on integrating into this new map. So again, the fighting ring is going to be kind of like the main focus. So you can see I've, I've centered it pretty, pretty much in the dead center of this map. Um, and then on the same island, we're going to have a watchtower just to make sure that nobody's acting up when they're in the fighting ring. You know, they could shoot um, an arrow down into the fighting ring, um, a blow dart, something like that to, to put a stop to whatever, you know, stuff is going on. Um, I wanted to kind of tell a little bit of a story to this as well. So in a bottom left island that I'm going to include in this map, there is some deadly flora. Now, when I say deadly, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, if you were going to use those flowers or put someone on that island or something like that, they would die right away. I'm thinking more along the lines of kind of like the poppies from The Wizard of Oz. Maybe they use that to kind of, um, you know, sublimate the, the people who are, I'm sorry, subjugate the people who are in the cages or the animals that are in the cages over on the bottom right island. Um, it's much easier to, you know, make people do your bidding if they're too weary to fight back or anything like that. So obviously I used the original map to kind of help me identify which direction I'm going to go on with things. Um, the next step is to kind of, um, take this and just make it the, the bottom piece because I can't load the original stamp in, um, without it kind of overpowering what I have. So at this point, um, in Photoshop, I'm going to real quick just make sure that I didn't lose anything. So I did lose a tiny smidge, so I'm going to move that up just to make sure that I catch all that. At this point, everything's cropped out, and I've got the islands that I want, the shape of the map that I want. So I'm actually going to make a new save for this. The, the old one was a PSD file because I wanted to be able to manipulate it as much as I need to. This one I'm just going to keep named the same way um, since it is just a, um, a map like this. I, I did, part of me is thinking that I should do this as a ping because at that point it will be semi-transparent. Um, I did that for the the map that's going to come out tomorrow, which is the Mountain Ascent, which is a sequel to my Cliffside Cave map. Um, I feel like it probably was a little bit easier for me to get away with that uh, on that map because things were a little bit lighter. You know, the green colors that I'm using on that map, they're not as, um, as dark on the screen. I feel like I'm not going to be able to get away with that here. Um, those, those the dark water that you see um, in the clone is going to follow its way here and then I'm going to have to kind of manipulate things as I go. Um, so what I'm ultimately going to have to do, I think, is we're going to save this as a JPEG instead so it does not preserve that transparency. So again, still calling it Jungle 1 South Copy. That's fine. Um, we'll let this do its thing. I want it to be as high quality as I can get it and then I'm just going to completely close out of uh, Photoshop because my computer will not be able to handle both at the same time. Um, from there, what I'll do is go to my stamps and I am going to upload that entire fake map that I was working on, that draft, into here. So what we're going to do is go to the Jungle One South here and we'll take that JPEG in and you'll see 
it doesn't preserve that uh, that transparency. So that's what I want. Um, it's not it's not always going to be the best thing. I, this might be the wrong avenue that I'm going down, but I'm going to give it a try and we'll see what happens. Um, when I put that to the background, it should allow me to play a little bit nicer with it, um, but we'll see. So here in my universal track up here, I should be able to see my stamp. So it's telling me that it's a private asset. So if I use it, I'm not going to be able to share these maps. And I am able to share them, just not through the incarnate uh, interface. And that's fine. Um, so what we're going to do is zoom that in until it is about the right size for what we have on screen. It doesn't have to be 100% exact, but um, certainly if, uh, if I have it in kind of like the, the right way. And then you can fine tune it with your S or your W keys. So let's see what I got here. Does that look, that looks pretty good. That a little bit more was all I, all I needed it looked like. Um, and then what I'll do from here is again, um, I'm going to make this a uh, flatten the background. And at that point you can kind of see where things are coming together. Um, Part of what I'm going to have to do in this map is I'm going to have to move some things off screen just a little bit. Certainly we're planning on putting together, you know, some trees and stuff like that where we can. Um, I want some bridges between the islands that I didn't include. Um, and we'll kind of, we'll move things around because again, I don't want to lose the stamps entirely. Um, I think in theory, if I get rid of all these trees and things like that. It may keep the stamps. We'll give it a try real quick. This is like my 31st map. No, I mean, it, between me and my brother, it's our 31st map. Um, and I'm still kind of learning stuff. So let's see if, if I come in here now, now the trees are still there. So I can really kind of play around with this as needed. Um, it does, it does say recently used. So that's where you kind of get into a tricky territory. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just shrink things down just so that I have the assets that I need. Again, there's certain things that I, I plan on using, certain things that I don't. Like the whole feature of that first map was we had you know a, a tree like that that had fallen. I wanted to see like a natural overpass onto another island. I don't really care about that here. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of that. Um, I already have some of these kind of pieces of flora that are coming in. Um, we'll move some of this stuff over. Keep a little bit of these things. That first one wasn't too crazy. Obviously, the big one was the um, the temple itself. So we we'll want to make sure that uh, we don't have the temple on any lower layers. But it doesn't look like we did. And I think the reason for that is because in order to get that look that I had before, where the temple was underwater, I had to release that to the background layer. And draw over it with the with the water. Now we're not going to have too much of that here, but I am going to. You can see with um, the dotted lines that I have, uh, the plan is to make a full island here and then make it look like uh, part of the island is descending into the water. So you're going to have a little bit of the the island is going to be completely submerged, and then on top of that, in order to achieve the fighting ring uh, look that I'm going for. The plan is to um, use, there's a, a stamp, an asset that's in the orc set, I believe, that just looks like spikes. Um, we're gonna use those. We're gonna have them surrounding, you know, the, the focal point that we have here for the fighting ring, but then specifically down here in the bottom right corner, um, where we know that the island's gonna be submerged, parts of those spikes are gonna be submerged too, so it should give you kind of a feeling of um, of depth, you know, and it'll add a little bit more to the strategy and everything. Um, and, and it'll just make it more, it'll feel more dynamic. So we'll try and work on that a little bit too. Um, we're not going to have logs. We, again, we may have these, uh, these bridges. So I'll take one of those over here just to kind of keep it for later. We'll get rid of this. We already have one of those over there. One of those, one of these. So at this point, we're pretty much done as far as the assets that we need. And eventually what I'll do is I'll go back to a picture of um, the original jungle map and we'll, we'll make some comparisons. Um, I know that when I was making the original map, what I wanted to do was, here, you know what? 
I will I'll, I'll bring it up real quick just so that we can see what it looks like. So this is a low res map. You can get the uh, the higher res maps on Patreon as well as the um, the variants that we have. Um, what you're going to see is on the the maps that we have here. What I did for all of these is I had a foreground layer that you can see here with the uh, the brown um, outline. I don't know if I'm going to keep that. That is something that I've kind of just grown not to like as much. Um, I may keep it and just kind of dial back a little bit. Um, but certainly what I did was on the background layer, um, what I did was I created these cliffs, um, dropped them into the background layer, and then used the, the water that I had to give it, again, a sense of depth. I wanted to, to make it look like the top layer of the island was, was dry, but as you descended deeper down, you could see you know, this whole area is pretty swampy and everything like that. So that's what I'll end up doing with the, the map that we have here, in addition to having the full island um, descend at some point and become submerged. So the first step is going to be removing some of the, the mask. So what we're going to do is just take this all out and start it from scratch. I'll probably leave that little island down there just to make sure that if anything funky is going on, I can play with it. Um, and then from there, we're going to go back to add. I sometimes will play with the sharper edges, the, the shape. Um, we'll play with it now just to see if we can get some more natural, um, you know, kind of lines. If not, what we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of reduce the roughness and see if that plays a little nicer. Um, ultimately, we'll just, we'll give it a try. That, I mean, nine times out of ten, especially when you're starting, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be playing with the system, trying to figure out if it's doing what you want it to do. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, I am going to reduce the size a tiny smidge more, if it'll let me. Yeah, we're going to take it to five, and then we'll see what it lets us do. So I have a, uh, a big Cintiq, Wacom, Wacom Cintiq, whatever it is, um, that I had bought for my wife many years ago. It still runs really nice, um, and it lets me draw on screen, so I have a little bit more precision. but. Usually, like if I'm in a spot where I don't have access to this, I can still get, you know, a nice shape for everything. So don't be discouraged if you don't have this kind of stuff working for you. It's not going to be the, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world. So and especially when you're doing something like this with the shape brush, where it's not, you know, it's it's really not following the original lines that I made at all. You can see, um, but at the end of the day, when I uh, fill in the rest of this. If I need to, I can make adjustments. Um, we'll kind of play with it. We'll see if I like it. Um, and I'll probably make um, some comparisons to the stuff that I had before and see if it kind of retains that same feeling. Because again, I don't want to. I don't want to make it too different from what I had before. So if we bring this map over, yeah, I mean it's pretty jagged. It's uh, it's I that certainly these lines. They're certainly not ones that I made. I'm not that, you know, that wobbly when I draw freehand. Um, so I very likely used um, the, I used this technique for the mask. I might have dialed it down a little bit. Again, I don't feel like it's too far away now where we have to worry about too much for the big island. For the smaller islands, I might dial it back just a little bit just to see if I can get like different shapes. Um, so we'll try that. We're going to add some more. Yeah, that I feel like is a little bit more like what we had on the other map. And it, it's, it certainly looks wonky now because you're only seeing it on one side. When you, or I'm sorry, you're seeing it on both. When you're done, you're only going to see it on the one. Um, like when you really fill in the spots. So we're going to work on that. And then I'm going to try and conceptualize on that main island how to really capture that, um, the idea of the submerged area of the, of that main island. Because for stamps, it's fairly easy to get what you want. You know, it's, you, you're very easily able to drop something into the background layer. I'm not going to be able to just kind of 
take a lasso tool like you could do in Photoshop, highlight this area and say, all right, yeah, this is, this is where we know it's going to drop off. So that might be even more of a reason to say, I know that I'm going to have to um, kind of dial back the, the, the lines on the, and, and it looks like for, for the most part, that stroke, so to speak, is, is gone. We don't have to worry about that here. So I'm not too worried about that being too overwhelming. But what I am going to do is we'll take this here. We're going to kind of flush this out a little bit because this is where the, where the drop off is going to be. And what we'll do actually is we'll subtract this out. So we don't have to do it later. And the plan is going to be to, so I've been doing this as the background, which means I think I've been doing it wrong. And I think that's why the lines haven't been as crazy. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm on the brush layer anyway. Um, yeah, no, that's fine. So everything so far is okay. The next step is going to be on the background layer to take what we already have and we kind of want that look in this area and then what we'll do is we'll fill in water down here over top um, it'll just be a smaller amount of opacity here um, or I guess less opacity hold on I'm trying to conceptualize how to say it in my head um, the idea is going to be for the for the main area where you see all the water and everything that's going to be a, a darker opacity. You're not going to be able to see much underneath that area. Um, but for for this area of the map, we are going to um, have a little bit of water, but enough is going to be vis visible so that you can still see what's going on. So like if I was going to take this now, um, certainly I, I'm only going to be on this stream for you know, another half hour. I'm, I don't know how far I'm going to get with this, but I'm at least going to show you some techniques. And then later on, um, either I'll do another stream or we'll do something else to just kind of show you what's going on. But I want to show you techniques, make sure that, you know, you know how to do this on your own. Um, and I'm no expert. This is just stuff that I'm learning on, on my own and I want to share. Um, so we have what's ultimately going to be, if we take the, the mask tool and we fill this in, um, Let's zoom this in a little bit because we want to show you what it's going to look like um, more than what we have now. So I am going to fill some of this spot in a bit more so that you can see. It, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to have just this little bit of area over here that's, uh, that's filled in because you're not going to get a, a good concept of what it's going to look like in, in its finished form. So we're going to fill in at least enough of this to show you the technique that I'm planning on using. And then if I change my mind later on, I'll, uh, I'll bring that up in another stream and we can kind of talk about it then. So let me fill that in a little tiny bit more. I think there's probably going to be a, a little bit of cleanup too because um, you can see like this is just so well refined um, and I want to make sure that there's you know just just like with the main part of the island I want there to be some some bumps and stuff like that also at least for this part of the island it doesn't really make sense for these um, the stroke lines to be there kind of jumpy like that because um, the island itself doesn't have that kind of look to it it there might be a little bit of you know terrain ups and downs but it wouldn't be quite like that 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 looks like the island is is breaking and falling apart and that's not quite what we want to do so what we're actually going to do is for that part of the island we're going to just make a little bit smoother it's not going to be a 100 percent curve or anything like that but it should feel a little bit more like a natural descent and when we have the um the stroke like if we get rid of this you're barely going to notice the, the real thing that you're going to notice is when we have that water layer that we're going to start to apply that's where the change is really going to happen right 
So if I'm taking the, the area that we're trying to get rid of there, and that's all the water that's going to be around it as well. So we're not doing anything too crazy there. And we get rid of the stroke again. You can start to see kind of like that makes sense. There's, you know, there's clearly a descent into the water there. And then what we can do is with the brush tool again, we can say as you get further down, there's more of an alpha layer that's, you know, left out. So you can keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, now, one thing that you will notice here is I, I've lost the fighting ring layer because I've, I've put the foreground over top of it. I left enough of it here where I should be able to play with what I need to. So what I'm going to do is put my pen down because at this point we're going to be a little bit more precise with things. So I think, I don't think it's called spikes. I think it might be called barricade. And I'm in my own uh, catalog right now. I'm just going to go to the fantasy battle maps. It does not look like that. We'll see if orc, if I do the pack orc, if I can see. Yep. So these stake fences, they're what I'm really looking for. And what I'll do is I'll pick one of these, I'll pick random stamps because I, I want them to feel um, like each one of them was not uniform. I want it to feel like it was kind of put together in a way that, um, you know, the these lizard folk, the Lugano, they, they just kind of lash things together to appease their gods and that kind of thing. So let's try this out a little bit. Each one of these is going to kind of turn a smidge. Again, because I don't have the, um, the layer here, I don't have the best idea of where it's all gonna land, but it doesn't have to be perfect anyway. I mean, again, because these lizard folk are putting this stuff together in the way that they are. Um, it's just, it's just it, it was never gonna be perfect anyway. Um, what we can actually do well, I don't know necessarily that I want to do that. I was going to say we could take it along that, that line right there because you can see where the deeper water starts. Um, I don't know 100% that I feel great about that, so what we might do is just keep doing what we're doing. Um, although, I'm not sure that I like how big that one is, and I'm sure six is just as bad. So what we're going to do is stick to the smaller ones because um, that'll help us to make narrower curves. Um, I don't want it to be the same one again. So you'll see, eh, you know, it's different enough because it's got the skull. I don't know how much the the game master or the players are going to notice that, um, especially because, as you can see, like these spikes are going to be on the, the layer um, that's going to be submerged. The idea is that, yes, we're putting these stamps here, um, but we're going to drop the ones that are on the water to the background layer, um, which means, like if, I'm gonna show you something real quick. So if we drop this to the background, if we flatten it to the background, we lose half of it. So we may have to be a little bit tricky about that. Um, I might have to play around with that a little bit differently to see what we can do to make that look better than the way it looks right now. Um, Again, with 20 minutes left, I don't know that that'll be the thing that we'll learn in this stream, but we're at least playing around. Um, you know, we're experimenting, and that's perfectly fine. So I'm actually going to fill in the rest of the yellow. Um, again, I kind of want to stay away from these big ones because it, it makes it harder to make the, um, the, the arc seem natural. So we're gonna stick to one through four. Um, and again, here here you're definitely gonna see that there's a difference because this one is not gonna be submerged. There might be things that I add to the fighting ring as well to kind of you know add a little pizzazz to it and things like that. Um, certainly you see the bodies that are strewn apart, the barricades, um, and I, that might be something that I tweak a little bit as well because we see a lot of bodies. And, and it almost looks like it's happening on a, an every other kind of situation. And I don't necessarily want that. Um, but again, we're just kind of getting a feel for it right now. And then we'll, uh, we'll tweak things as we go. Um, but what I might do is to kind of disguise certain things and make it feel a little bit more dynamic instead of the same four stamps over and over and over. Um, what I might do is throw together like a, like a weapon 
is lying against um, one of these barricades. That's one of the ones that was too big. So it's not um, it's not one through four. It's one, two, four, and five. It looks like the only big difference is um, one, two, and three don't have any decorations on them, and um, four, five, six they all have the the skeletons and everything like that. So really, the only ones that I'm going to be doing are one, two, four, and five. So we'll keep doing this. Uh, and one of the things that I had mentioned earlier on in the stream is that the the plan is to make the wood that the Logano use kind of the same color. Um, it, if in hindsight, what I might have done was on that previous map, which I'll show again real quick. Uh, and you know what? There's 107 changes here, so I'm going to save that while I'm talking. Um, let me go back to the original map that I got rid of and you can see in hindsight what I might have done differently <clears throat> knowing that um, the variants that I worked on later had that green look I might have made some of the trees look green too like you can see the bridges have that kind of green look and I don't know if that is necessarily the tree itself that they got the lumber from or if that's like you know this is a swampy area did everything just get mossy over time and that's what it looks like and if that was the case was there anything else that I could have done to, to make it look a little bit better in that way? Um, a lot of the time, if you're trying to to add a little bit of like a personal touch to things, you have to drop it to the the background layer um, or, or color over it. And I think the coloring doesn't work on stamps um, by themselves. So you have to, again, drop it to the background layer. A lot of the times I'm, I'm working on a background layer because it adds a little bit of personal flexibility that I can work with. But even without that, we, uh, we have some stuff that we can do here. So I am going to try and fill this out a little bit more. Again, I don't care too much about um, the skeletons being there. I just care about it if it's every single time. So let's drop back to another one of these. I might also uh, drop out one of these so that you know there's there's an actual entrance and exit um, because they have to be able to get their prisoners and their you know their animals and stuff like that in here somehow um, and it doesn't make sense for them to you know take out the stakes or anything like that so they might have like guards over here um, that are the reason that uh, people can get in and out but that'll be that'll be a later problem for me to solve. So again, here is kind of where we lose track of where that circle is. Um, and, and that's fine because the Logano would have trouble keeping this up the right way. So once we get to specifically the submerged section, I might not really care as much um, about having it be perfect. And I am going to play with a couple of other um, parts of the the mask tool to see if I can make this transition look even more natural. I feel like that's an outline layer, but I want to test it real quick, and then we'll see what we get. And that actually ended up looking really nice. Um, it closed off pretty well. There's always going to be a little bit of overlap here and there, um, but as far as, as I'm concerned, that, that went really well. Um, so let's go back to the, the mask layer. We're going to turn off the outline. It doesn't look like it did too much, so it might be the shadow layer. It's not that. Okay, yeah, so it's the inner shadows. I might be able to mess with the intensity a little bit to keep that a little bit, but not make it as jarring. So if I come down to like one, well, let's see. I might even be able to build that up a little bit more. Yeah, that, I feel like it preserves the original idea where we're gonna have some nice um, shadows on the inside of the, um, the foreground layer when we need it. 
but it's not so jarring that it looks like something's off here. Like this really does look, and certainly when I add some shadows, you know, some some actual shadows onto this, um, it'll look even more like it's naturally descending into, you know, this swampy area. So that's great. That's that's looking really good so far. Um, what we'll do is with the rest of uh, our time here, we're just going to fill in what we have. Um, and then maybe uh, with a couple minutes left, we will find um, the the right um, stamps for some of the other stuff, uh, like the watchtowers, the cages, things like that. So I'm going to get my the Wacom tablet uh, compatible pencil again, pen, and we're going to fill in this island down here. And typically, if I'm working on one of these maps where, you know, I've got the, the draft layer done, what I'll do is before I close everything off and kind of lose track of where I was going, um, I'll get the stamp out. So, like, now we'll see if there's anything cage specific. And if there's not, then we might end up... We've got, like, a pirate cage, um, and we've got the, the hell layer cage and the gothic horror cage. I feel like the gothic horror might work out. So we've got these sturdy cages here with like these metal pieces on the corners. I feel like the, the Logano are a little too tribal to work too much metal into things. If, you know, if they, they, they might have metal on their, their weapons and stuff like that. Um, but specifically, you know, we're seeing like all this wood lashed together in the fighting ring. If they were going to do something really crazy, they'd have them, you know, tipped with, you know, iron and steel and stuff like that so we're not going to go too crazy there um what we'll tr probably do is just use these um so the one bad thing about this one is this is this is the only one um there's not a lot to to choose from when it comes to this style of the sturdy cage um so what i might end up actually doing is and i'll have to figure it out a little bit more so we'll, have, we'll use this one big cage with the idea that it's got a couple of people in it or a couple of animals or something like that we'll do another one that's uh, angled a little differently but we're making it smaller we're making it a one person thing and then what we might actually do is and I'll have to see if it's something that I like enough to remember um, maybe what we'll do is we'll carve out a pit over here that they'll drop people into um, and then have more of those spikes kind of around it saying like, hey, you know, you're here, there's no way you're getting out unless we let you out. Um, so it, again, it adds a little bit more of a dynamicism to, to that section of the map. Um, and then, yeah, and, and that's probably what we can do there. We'll probably leave the watchtower for a little bit because I wanna do, I'm gonna bring this map over again, but it's gonna be the prop version. So you're seeing a sneak peek of this from you know, October of last year. Um, where do I have this guy? This is the prop version. We'll show you gridless just so I can bring it over and there's no grid interfering with us. So we did this kind of um, watchtower. And I mean, it's it's serviceable for sure. It's not, it's not like um, the orc towers from Warcraft or anything like that where you've got, you know, like the, you're not, shielded from the weather or anything like that. And the Logano probably don't really care about that too much. Um, certainly the way that I used this, uh, this stuff here now is um, there's just a ladder to get up to it. What I'm thinking of for, for our map here is I might want to do a little bit bigger of a tower. Um, I want them to be able to easily see over the spikes of the fighting ring to be able to shoot down uh, whatever they need to. So what I might do is kind of have the same general setup but instead of a ladder um, what I might do is make it bigger um, the watchtower base will be a little bit bigger with the idea that there will be steps or a ramp or something like that that moves up into that area um, and then you know that that'll be kind of how the Logano will get up to that instead of using a ladder it, it might be too much of a challenge to me and I might take a step back and do the ladder route that then that, that's fine too so um, ultimately, you don't want to, you know, drive yourself nuts with whatever you're doing, but just play around with it and make sure that you feel good about what you've accomplished. Um, all right, so we're going to finish masking this area up over here. Um, it is an ad. I feel like, why am I not? 
not seeing. Oh, okay, because it's just so small. So this, I know that this is going to be the flowers, so I don't have to worry too much about losing track of what I'm building here and, like, the where, anything like that. This island is just going to be, you know, their harvest island. This is where they do the um, the arrows that they could coat their weapon, or I'm sorry, the uh, flowers that they could coat their weapons in, um, things along that line. So, and I mean, that might explain why they're taking prisoners. You know, they're, they're doing it for... For entertainment they're bringing them to the fighting pits and that explains how they're able to get them back because they've got these flowers that they use um, that you know poisons their enemies and ends up making it so they're easier to subdue and get back to their camp and what we're seeing here is not really so much their camp as you know it's like they're um, it's more commercial than where they're living Certainly later on, the idea, I don't know if I mentioned this at the top of the, um, of my stream, but the idea is that, uh, hello, Eternal Belcorian. Um, the idea is that going forward for me, so, so the channel is, well, the stream is going to be me all the time. Um, my brother has his own streams that he's doing and everything like that, but our Patreon channel is, um... If you are following us on Patreon, you'll see me and Matt will we'll flip-flop from time to time. Um, the plan was originally we were going to only release maps on Thursdays. I think I'm trying to get to a point where I'm completing maps every three days or so. Um, I just did a, a change of uh, day job, and I'm hoping that um, I'm able to stick with this new plan um, and kind of use a little bit more downtime to do things like these streams. Um, when I'm not streaming, you know, kind of clean up the maps a little bit. Um, you're going to see pieces of the map making. I doubt that you'll ever, ever see the entire map making process unless I kind of stitch together a couple of videos. Um, just because a lot of times when I'm on these streams, I'm kind of conceptualizing it as I go. Certainly we had the draft map that is supposed to help me understand where I'm going. Um, but I never know exactly where I'm going right from the get-go. So um, you can see, like, on the fly, I was trying to figure out what to do with, you know, descending the island into the water and everything. So you're always going to have stuff like that, and that's fine. Um, but the idea... I, I go on these tangents from time to time, and I apologize. All right. Pickledorf wants me to zoom out. Um, so that's the map as it stands right now. Still a lot of work to do. Um... But at least we've got a general shape of where everything is going to go. We made sure to keep our stamps. Um, we can use the old map to kind of take the other pieces that we had. Ah, sultry voice. Yeah, I've been told I should do ASMR. But uh, I don't know if as gravelly as I get sometimes that's uh, something that people would want to hear. Um, but anyway, so the, the idea is... At least for me, my plan is to zigzag between brand new maps and um, the old ones that we have. So when I say go, we'll zigzag back into old maps, what I mean by that is we'll do sequels. So at the top of this stream, I had mentioned that uh, this is a sequel to, and one more time just because I'm not sure if Valkorian was able to see it earlier. We'll drop this. And uh, anybody else who's you know jumping around, um, they can see it as well. So, and a little shameless self-promotion doesn't hurt too. Um, so we have this here where this is the original map that it was based on. Um, we've got a sunken temple that the Leganos, which is the Telus lizard folk, um, they'll come in and they'll, they'll pray within this temple and everything like that. And it gives the, the game master an opportunity to, um, does it say mountain ascent? Maybe I didn't hit done. Has that look, Pickledorf? That change to Jungle Fighting Ring? Nice. Thank you. Um, I I don't do too many indoor maps yet. Um, so the next map after this one is going to be... I believe the... It, it actually will be our first indoor map. Um, and it's because uh, I've been looking forever for one of my computers that had the first ever session that my campaign... Um, you know, my party that I DM for um, played in. They uh, they did something called 
um, the Forgotten Keep. And I've been trying to find that material again. I'm not going to be able to, so it's going to be a reimagining of that content. And what we'll do is um, that'll be the next new map, quote unquote, and then we'll come back and do, I think, like the next one after that is the Savannah. I have it all written down, so I'll give you a little preview of what, um, by name, what we'll be expecting over the uh, the next couple of weeks. So um, the map that's going to come out tomorrow is going to be Mountain Ascent. That is the sequel to my Cliffside Cave map. Um, I also completed a map that's going to come out on July 6th called Coastal Cave. And that's only if, uh, if my brother doesn't finish any of his maps. Um, what we might do, and he's hearing about this right now, um, is on the weeks that he has a map done, we'll have his map take that prize Thursday place um, because that's when most of our uh, patrons are aware that those are dropping in. And my map would drop either on Tuesday or Saturday or something like that so that it gives Matt's maps time to breathe on their own. Um, so Coastal Cave is already done. Um, I did a little bit of a stream, I think, last week on that just to kind of get a feel for it that might have been the no i guess it would have been the the mountain ascent um what i'll do later is kind of like a uh, proof of concept stream to show how to get what i did with the coastal cave done um and then that'll give people an idea of what they can do next time uh, the July 13th map that I'm going to be working on is this Jungle Temple, so I'm giving myself plenty of runway for that. And then again, July 20th is when we're going to go with our first indoor map um, for me. Matt has done a couple of indoor maps that are really cool. I did one semi-indoor map, um, but it was a very small piece of what was on the battle map itself. Um, the Forbidden Keep, we're going to do one wing at a time as we zigzag back and forth. Um, that keep was pretty big. It was a it was a big effort, and I don't even think that everybody finished that. But it might have taken three sessions for everybody to complete it because it was four wings. You know, it very very much felt like a Zelda game or something like that. And we're gonna try and make sure that we maintain that feeling. Um, so one more time, let's just show kind of where we ended up today. Um, you know, we spent forty five minutes, give or take. Um, not a huge amount, but we also spent time looking at um, the steps that it took to get here. You know, what, what did the process look like to, to make um, this draft picture that we brought in as a stamp that we could draw over? Um, where are we connecting this to? Um, and if I do another stream, it'll be to show what it looks like afterwards. Because certainly with the, the draft document, we have... A good idea but what you want to do afterwards is take the finished pictures and kind of line them up and see is it doing what you want there's kind of a light way that we can do that here so what I'll do is um, we'll move actually let me save real quick just to make sure that I don't lose anything and what we'll do is move this down a smidge because what we'll do is bring over the We'll just do the lower res right now, just to see what it looks like. Um, and we can move this up. We can move this off, so we don't need to really see everything too crazy. And if we, because it's low res, it's not 100% right, so I am going to grab a slightly higher res version. So we've got the gridded version. We want the grid because the grid will help us make sure that we're looking at everything the right way. And get the image lined up and then we'll do some zooming in or out as needed. All right, so that is the entirety of the map. So that's pretty close as far as where the grid lines up. So now if I move this down a little bit further and then I can use this, line it up, and you can see it's pretty darn close. Um, 
certainly when we you know fill in everything it'll look even better we'll be able to to differentiate that much more um how things are going to look and you know when we have the water in and everything we'll, we'll definitely have the the cliffs that we have underwater here that'll make it feel that much more rich and dynamic um but I, i'm very happy with where we ended up i think it's uh it's doing what we wanted to do this is the second sequel that i've done like this where i'm i'm linking it up um, ahead of time to make sure that everything is is lining up the way that we expect it to and it, it looks very much like it is um, I'm very happy with uh, with what we have so far I'm happy with the the technique that we tried to do down here with submerging the island somewhat and by the time we wrap this up I think it'll be another good map to add to our catalog um, so that brings us to eight o'clock um, I'm not always going to drop right at eight or anything like that but it is sweltering in the room that I'm working in right now uh, so I will probably wrap this up now, um, but just uh, in case anybody in the chat room has anything they want to ask or say, um, I, th I feel like I probably know both of these people. I know Pickledor for sure. I feel like Eternal Valkorian may be a friend that I don't know the, the username of, and if not, you're a new friend anyway. Um, but I want to try and make sure that I'm training myself to ask these questions as well. Is there anything that that I didn't answer that you wanted to ask in the chat. Um, oh look, we've got another person. Misery is here. Thanks, Pickledorf. Um, yeah, I want to make sure that we're we're maintaining the same style of when we're going over everything that I'm not leaving people high and dry right away. I want to make sure that uh, you know if there's questions to be asked, I give the audience enough time to ask them and things like that. I think she's saying that I'm Bob Ross. Because we're putting happy little cages in the corners and things like that. All right. I think what we'll do is we'll give it another minute or two just to make sure that I'm not rushing every, anybody off the stream or anything like that. And, um, and yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll either pick this up later or I'll show you uh, maybe before whatever next stream for whatever map I'm doing, I'll show you the finished version of this um, in low res before it hits Patreon or something along those lines. Um, you know, you won't be able to download it or anything like that, but you'll at least be able to kind of see like where we ended up. So we'll show you, um, I'll take like a screenshot right out of the stream. We'll show you where we ended up here and then we'll show you where we ended up in the final piece. But it sounds like we're good to go. So I am gonna wrap up this stream. Um, and then I'm still kind of working out what my day job feels like. Uh, so there's no definitive schedule yet, but I am going to try and get to a point where, um, you know, if you are looking for these things, it's a fairly regular occurrence where, hey, Mike is going to stream at eight o'clock on, or I'm sorry, at seven o'clock on Wednesdays and Thursdays or something like that. I don't know what it's going to look like, but we'll, um, once we have some more details, we'll put that, um, on the channel and make sure that everybody's aware of things. But with, uh unless there's anything last that we need to discuss i will be wrapping up in two minutes and uh and i'll see you next time i'm gonna have to have like a cool outro thing here or something like that we'll put a video up here all right we're all saved up this is the me rambling to myself part of the uh of the stream oh you can see uh, one thing that we didn't discuss um, in the original map, I had this texture for forest lighting. And when you drop it, it completely changes the feel to it. So across the across the board when we're doing the jungle maps, we'll definitely keep the, uh, the forest lighting texture. I'll call you when I get off. In fact, I will get off now and I'll give you a buzz. Thanks, everybody.